Previously, Nvidia announced the RTX 4080 12G, but after receiving a backlash from the community, today what we have here is the same card but with a different name, the RTX 4070 Ti. For those FE collectors, it's rather unfortunate that the 4070 Ti will not be launched with the Founder Edition models. So in this video, we will be taking a closer look at this Zotac RTX 4070 Ti M Extreme Aero and show you what kind of performance to expect if you're going for the 4070 Ti in your next upgrade. Equipped with the same massive triple fan cooler, this card is just as big as the previous 4090 and 4080M Extreme Aero. Zotac did include a graphics card holder in the box, so you can make good use of that to support the card's weight if you're not mounting the card vertically. That aside, it also comes with a lower TDP of 285 Watt, which theoretically can be powered using two PCIe 8-pin cables. Nonetheless, the package has included a 3 PCIe 8-pin to single 12V HPWL adapter. Of course, you can get a custom 2 8-pin adapter to make your cable management easier, but the best option is still a power supply with a dedicated 12V HPWL cable. As for the display output, it's pretty standard, I would say. 3 display port and a single HDMI. For the specifications of our test bench, we will have the Intel Core i9-12900K, ROG Maximus Z690 Apex and Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 RGB at 6000MHz CL30. To get the best performance out of the GPU, we're testing to have a fair performance comparison. We've tested the 4070 Ti against the 3090 and 4080 mainly to get a clearer picture of how the card is positioned. On pure raster performance, the 4070 Ti is about 10% better or almost on par with the 3090. At 4K resolution, the card can easily run a handful of titles while getting at least 60 FPS on average. However, for graphically demanding titles like you know, Cyberpunk 2077, you will have to go with a lower graphics settings or enable DLSS to get higher frame rates. That goes without saying, 1440p is a piece of cake for all three cards. The 4070 Ti easily maintains an average of 100 plus FPS while doing slightly better than the 3090. As for the ray tracing performance, both the 3090 and 4070 Ti starts to struggle with highest graphics settings and ray tracing set to ultra. Both cards struggle to hit 60 average FPS on titles like Hitman 3, Cyberpunk, and Metro Exodus. For Watch Dogs Legion, however, the 4070 Ti still managed to maintain an average of 61 FPS despite of the game being one of the most demanding on the list. While this can be solved easily by lowering the graphics settings, ray tracing quality and DLSS preset, but I can say that the 4070 Ti is more suitable for 1440p. If you're going all out in ray tracing and DLSS quality preset. On 1440p, the 4070 Ti has no problem with us going all out on all the settings, with all titles tested being able to maintain more than 80 FPS at ease. Now, moving on to DLSS 3, one of the key selling point of the RTX 40 series cards. 
What's with the current situation with the new tech? Well, more games are getting DLSS3 support for sure. Apart from Cyberpunk, with DLSS that a lot of reviewers have been showing to the mass, new titles like Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, A Plague Tale Requiem, and Luke Mansa is getting their own highlight as well. And older titles like Portal, The Witcher 3, and Bright Memory Infinite also get a new Breath of Air with DLSS 3 and some wholesome RTX for the extra aesthetics. So that's something to look forward to, especially when Nvidia finally announced the RTX 4060 in the future. For the synthetic benchmarks, we have the usual 3D Mark. Octane Bench, Blender Benchmark, and V-Ray Benchmark for a quick performance gauge. In the three presets for Blender Benchmark, aside from junk shop tests that requires more VRAM, on average, the 4070 Ti basically perform up to 25% better than 3090 with ease. As for benchmark that involve ray tracing works like Octane Bench 2020 and V-Ray. The 4070 Ti also performs better than the 3090, but the performance gap is only at about 5 to 8% range, which is not as big as what we've seen on the other benchmarks. And for 3D Mark, for the fun of it, the 4070 Ti also takes the lead by quite a margin in tests like TimeSpy, TimeSpy Extreme, and Port Royal. For newer benchmarks like Speedway Test, however, the performance gap is surprisingly small, only at about 2% more than the 3090. The thermals will vary by the cooler design from different AIC partners, but as far as what we have observed on the 4070 Ti, M Extreme Aero, long name, is all good. With heavy workloads that only peak at about 71 degrees Celsius, you don't have to worry about the GPU overheating during gaming sessions. During our gaming test, the highest GPU temperature recorded is only at the 62 degrees Celsius range. Other parts like GPU hotspot, GPU memory junction temperature are looking okay at this point which only peak out at 64 degrees Celsius and 86 degrees Celsius respectively. And for the power draw, while we did manage to get a max power draw at 283 watts, it's only when we're doing consecutive synthetic benchmarks that is trying to squeeze every drop of performance out of the GPU on long hours. If it's only used for gaming, 264 watts is the highest we can see and most of the time, the power draw is hovering around 230 watts. This brings us back to the power supply requirement. While Nvidia did recommend a minimum 700 watt power supply, there are chances that you can still get away with a 650 watt power supply if you're on the mid-tier specs where the CPU is not going to draw like 200 watt plus on load. Though the 12 VHPWR is not really common on a power supply that is below 850 watt as of now. And your only option at the moment is probably the included adapter. Of course, you can go for custom cables from trusted custom cable manufacturers, but that's entirely up to you. So now, $899 is still expensive if we compare it to the 3080 launch price of $699. But seeing what the RTX 4070 Ti is capable of, I'd say it's a pretty reasonable card to go for. Why is that? If you're still aiming for a 3090 Lite performance for your next upgrade, and you don't really need that 
extra VRAM. Well, 899, which roughly translate to probably around 5,000 ringgit at worst, is still better than a brand new 3090 that still goes at about 6,000 ringgit. On gaming alone, it is 4K gaming capable, DLSS3 ready, runs cooler and less power hungry than the 3090, and of course, support for the AV1 codec. So, that's a yes recommended from me more than the RTX 4080 even though I'll still recommend <laughs> on the RTX 4090 to those who can easily afford it. And that's all for this video. Do let us know your thoughts on the RTX 4070 Ti in the comment section below and I'll see you guys again in the next one.